Hi, in this video I'm going to be just talking about the water system. Hi all, okay I've been asked to go through some details on particular parts of the build um, which somebody wanted some ideas from so this particular video is just about the water and waste system um, if that has no interest to you then um, just stop now because that's all I'm going to talk about and just going through exactly what we've done and why um, bear in mind I'm a DIYer, I don't really know what I'm doing so do your own research okay so the water inlet we're using is this it's a Faro um, inlet it's from Rainbow Leisure it's magnetic and there's electrical ones to match. Uh, it comes in white, grey, black. This is a black one. So it's got a lockable water cap inside and there's a breather behind so uh, it'll allow the tank to vent um, externally. Bear in mind if you buy one of these the instructions say to use a 90 millimeter hole. In our experience we had to get a different hole saw and go 95. So check in some scrap ply before you drill a hole in the van. Um, we've also got one of these which is a uh, hep thingy, um, it, it sort of clips on and you can connect your hose to it and we've got an on off tab so we can control it here without sort of splurging water everywhere. So you just clip that in, click your hose on and just leave it and just turn it off when your tank's full. As I say the overflow will just come out the top. Inside, I'll try and cover this as quickly as I can but with detail. Um, this is the filler inside, um, it's got a uh, 38 40 mil inlet pipe and this is a 10 mil uh, vent pipe so the, it all goes into the tank and obviously air comes out the top and any overflow so it won't, won't come out the tank is a standard Fiamma 70 litre tank it's using their mounting kit but I've also strapped it down with a ratchet strap to a load bearing um, bolt and that's got a load brace underneath so in accidents it's not going to come out and, and kill us we've insulated it uh, just a fraction because if you put in icy cold water and the air in the van's warm, it's possible just to get condensation and damp patches around the tank. So we're just trying to minimise that. Most people would go external, um, but our experience of usage in winter uh, is that will freeze even with a heater. So we've got room, so we put it inside. Um, the water filler is at the bottom, um, sorry, the outlet. And somebody said to me, why don't you have it at the top? Uh, there was a logical reason um, for it at the bottom. But then I changed how we did all the plumbing here and that reason went away, but I forgot to rethink it. We then have a water filter that sort of filters the crud out from the tank or anything else. Note that this is on the low pressure side, of the, uh, so it's pre-pump. Then we have a 30 psi uh, diaphragm pump that works on pressure, that then uh, sends the water down through an accumulator. Now the accumulator is uh, sort of 50% full of air and there's a diaphragm inside. What actually happens, it means when the pump runs, it pressurizes this. So when you run the tap, it's, it's actually this depressurizes first and gives a nice smooth flow of the tap rather than sort of pulsing, which you typically get. That works really well. And from there, it drops down into the 12 mil push fit system. I would recommend the 12 mil push fit, it's brilliant. Um, I've had no leaks from it, um, but there are a few tips to bear in mind. Uh, the first is you do need to snip the end nice and cleanly. The second, I would recommend you use uh, inserts at the end of the pipe. The only place I saw selling these was Magnum, um, but they're really quite good. What it does is means that when these um, grip onto the pipe, it can't compress the pipe, in, uh, so it just can't come out and it can't uh, get loose. Um, so bear in mind these things will expand and contract over time. It just, just it's going to prevent problems in the future, so I would recommend it. The other thing I would recommend is um, when you when you cut your pipe is to get a template for your uh, equipment and see how far the pipe needs to go in and mark it and then you can work out uh, how deep it needs to go. So using this pipe actually you can, uh, this goes over the 12 mil so you can actually cut a bit off and use that as a template. So you can see down here I've got a black mark. Um, now to be fair that's the, the black mark uh, there, that's how far it should go if it was going into a corner but we know the uh, taps us a few mil out so I don't, I don't take it in a few mil uh, as much, so hence um, I'm happy to see the black line there, but I wouldn't be seeing it there. If I saw that far out on a junction, I know it's gone not, not far enough. Anyway, so we've got loads of stopcocks, that's the one that goes to the boiler. 
which is a true uh, 10G gas and electric uh, 10 litre boiler. It's got a uh, switch sensor, so this will detect the window being open. Um, so we've got a switch up here. Um, now, yeah, I'm shorting it out. That's the way to do this to put the proper switch in. And then the hot water, um, which then goes through. We've got a dump valve here. Um, can I show you that? Uh, which basically sends the water out under the floor um, when we want to dump the water. We've also got this inlet, and uh, it's turned off now. So this is an air pipe with a air valve on it. And this is from eBay. For, uh, I think it's a Land Rover air suspension inlet. And what it means is when there's no pressure in it, we can put a tire compressor on and uh, pressurize the system and basically use it compressed air to blow out water from the tap so it doesn't freeze. Anyway, then we've got the hot and cold water coming through into the bottom of the wardrobe that will be uh, insulated and covered with a shelf. And every item, like the taps, will have stopcocks for the hot and cold. And it's a bit overkill, you might say, but uh, if you use a van a lot, the, these, you know, the taps are leisure items. They're designed to be used two weeks a year. You know, so if you use them for you know, a thousand nights, they will wear out and they will leak, so it's worth doing. Um, so they're all there. The hot and cold for the bathroom sink, we've got a um, one-way valve on the cold. That basically means that when, if you have a mixer tap and a trigger, if you've got a tap on and the trigger off, what will happen is the hot can then come down the cold, because the hot will be under a slightly higher pressure. And that means when you then squeeze the trigger, you get double hot and you get scalded, um, only for a fraction of a second. The bathroom, I'm not going to go into too much detail, we've got a separate video on that. But we're using a ceramic sink from uh, Amazon and this tap is a shower mixer tap from uh, Magnum Leisure. So this you can use as a um, so a trigger, so just squeeze it in or you can latch it in and it latches in as a normal tap. Um, it's, it's open now and I'm leaving it all open because the tank's in drain so any water, you know, air can come up here and, and backtrack as much as possible. Anyway, um, then we've got uh, waste. Um, this is a standard 19mm uh, waste, um, same as the one in the floor for the shower. The waste comes down the 19mm pipe. The exper experience is the pipe is thick enough for the water flow, which is great. This is a smell trap from cat tanks. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it's badly made, they're crap. Uh, there's no way to empty it and it's a freeze liability. That said, I, I don't know anything better um, that's going to fit 19mm pipe, so if anybody knows, let me know, because um, I'd love to change it. Then the water waste comes down and that's coming out from the shower, which is accessible, it goes through a tier into the floor into the tank underneath. Okay, so that's the uh, waste. Lou is a C223S and the sink, again, hot and cold mixer and that's just a SMEV unit. Um, for the electrics, um, on my fuse box up here, I've got a single water switch, which uh, then goes through a particular fuse blue, blue for water, obviously. It comes to its own um, fuse box and little control panel here. So that gives us the depth gauge, which is the um, CVE's unit, which is just tells you when the tank is, the waste tank's full, and gives you depth based on the fresh tank. And that's that unit sitting in the top here. This, uh, we've got using this switch here as an on off for the boiler. Um, and then the boiler controls. I know you don't specifically need this, but I don't, you know, I do. And then this is what we call a dump and pump. So we're not using it exactly as, we've, as it was done and we sort of modified the wires around the back. But number one, we'll put it on pump, which is the internal pump. And then we'll have the light coming on we don't like leaving the pump running, uh, not running. We don't like it being powered because if there's a leak, it'll just bugger up all the water and send it all out. Number two is a dump valve, which I'll show you in a second. That's the sort of pump and dump. So that's all controlled from the one main, main fuse and then split off into uh, little fuses around the back here. Um, right, okay, so the waste tank. Um, again, uh, it's a CAC tank's uh, 60 litre tank. So this one and just some scrap aluminium um, I had lying around and I had to drill a couple of extra holes in the chassis just to hang it from um, obviously treated with zinc um, on the back we've got two, two inlets a shower uh, bathroom and kitchen and then we've got a waste this I need to just sort of lift up a bit um, but then the waste and the electrics um, come through here and I've made this sort of aluminium bracket that we're going to be painting black in the uh, in the future, today or tomorrow, 
and on here we've got a uh, screen. We've got a valve. Uh, so that's that's uh, different types of valves up in the commentary in the description. But basically, it's 12 volts. And when you take 12 volts off, it, um, oh, there you, go, you can see it there. When you take 12 volts off, it auto closes. It has a capacitor or something on board that stores enough power to close the valve. So hence, you just need to switch to switch it, and it opens and dumps the waste. And you turn it off, and it, it stops. It's about 20 quid. You know, considering the proper ones are hundreds, it's uh, not bad at all. And I'm quite happy. So that's the lowest point but it's not far off the suspension the step, so it shouldn't really get hit. This is just aluminium, just bonded onto the um, chassis rail inside. Uh, finally, this is the toilet cassette exit. We've converted the toilet to fish fit um, inside. Um, so that's you know, as normal. Uh, there's no stop on this because that's under the wardrobe. Uh, so the wardrobe, shower and toilet stop clock runs this and also this secondary um, feed and that's going to be for an external shower. So that will just have its own stop clock at the back and most of the time that will be off. But that's a bit water and waste. Uh, um, again, any questions um, feel free to ask. Hope that's useful and give some ideas. Cheers guys.